Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in the series on how to build an IFT service from scratch. In the previous video we looked at my simple uh, to-do app that has a React front-end and a back-end API. It provides some basic functionality to create, store, complete and delete to-do items and it has an user authentication. I highly recommend the process overview and the guidelines for success sections of the docs as companion pieces for the series. I'll leave the links in the description and you can always go to if.com slash docs for everything related to building and publishing new services and applets on if. The basic blocks of an if service and applets are triggers, queries, and actions. In this series, we'll build one of each for our to-do app service. Uh, to help decide, um, I'll follow the advice of the docs and take a look at a Google Task service, which I think is very similar to my app in functionality. So if we look at the details of the published service, uh, we can see it features two triggers. Uh, one of them fires when a new applet uh, when a new to-do is created and the other one fires when the to-do is complete. Uh, I think the first one might be more important uh, but I'll definitely want to add both eventually. I'll go with one trigger when a new to-do is created for starters. I will also add a query to list all of my to-dos and I think an action to create a new to-do makes perfect sense for my service as well. To plan the architecture of the service, let's look at the diagram in this doc. Uh, this is indeed the most common way to build an IFT-specific API. Uh, my to-do app already uh, has an API that the front-end consumes, so we'll focus on building this uh, shim app that will interact with the app's API on one end and expose endpoints to IFT on the other. Now, this is not the only way to create an IFT service and everything depends on what makes the most sense for your existing architecture. In my case, I wanted to avoid writing to the database directly from the IFT API. Uh, so to create tasks, we'll definitely be calling the apps API. I think that's enough theory for now. Let's jump right into it. Over on if.com, I want to go to my developers dashboard. Uh, I already have the service that I built uh, as I was preparing for the video. Uh, you will probably have a default Hello World service if you're just getting started, so you can modify that. But I'm going to create a new service. I will fill out the fields for the service later as we prepare to submit it for review. And for now, let's jump into the API section right away. So in this, uh, in this section, we will need to provide an API URL. Uh, we have our service key, which we'll be using later on. In the authentication section, we will be setting up um, in the later video, uh, the auth2 with refresh token scheme. We have some example triggers and queries. Um, well, I don't have them in this uh, in the service because it was created from scratch, but in a default Hello World service, you will have um, a placeholder trigger, a trigger query, and an action. So you can um, you can modify those, or if you are starting like me uh, from a perfectly blank service, then we'll be creating new triggers, queries, and actions. Uh, the endpoint tests uh, we are going to be using uh, as a template for the IFT service API. So in, this, uh, in a way, we'll be doing a test-driven development, relying on the endpoint tests as, um, as, as, our, as our template for what we need to build or what we need to fix. Right now, the tests are not running because we have not provided an API URL. Uh, but the status endpoint is the very first one that we'll need to create. Uh, let's look at the documentation for it. Over in the service API docs, 
all the way at the bottom, there is a service status endpoint. And this endpoint provides the ability for if to perform uh, a health check on a service. And it's not user authenticated, so uh, there's just a service key uh, in the headers. Uh, and we can see the API URL prefix followed by slash if slash v1 slash status. So this is the endpoint we'll be building. And the expectation from this endpoint is uh, just a basic HTTP status code, either at 200 if our uh, if API is up and running, or a 503 if um, there is a server error. And uh, we will be using the Python Fast API framework to build our if service API. Over in Visual Studio Code, I already have a folder for my new if API. Um, I have my Python virtual environment set up in the working folder. Um, so let's install Fast API with pip. Now let's create a main.py file. And here I'm going to copy the first example from the Fast API docs just to get us started. Uh, I'll have the link in the description to Fast API docs and I highly recommend their tutorial on um, how to get started. And let's run the Fast API server locally. Now, when we go to our local host uh, port 8000, we get the hello world response from um, uh, from Fast API. And over in the terminal where we have the server running, uh, we see the uh, get request. So we have the server up and running. Now uh, let's create the status endpoint. So I'll copy the hello world route and modify it for our status endpoint. So let's start an NGROC tunnel to our local port 8000. NGROC provides us with a public URL, so let's copy it and paste it as our if API URL. And now after saving it, go back to the endpoint tests. This time we begin the test and we see that things are still failing. But our biggest victory so far is this little green dot next to the valid request test. So this test sends the uh, request to our API URL prefix plus the route uh, for the status endpoint. There is a service key in the header and our server responded with a 200 code and the body um, with that with the message you can see that the only thing uh, down here in the checklist that this test is looking for is the 200 status code so we've passed that with our new endpoint uh, the next test with invalid channel key or service key as it's also called you can see that the the header is sending invalid as the value. Uh, but our server is still responding with a 200 because we're not checking for, uh, for, the, for the service key header yet. Uh, but the expectation is that uh, the server responds with a 401 error code. So this is what we will tackle next adding a function that will check the service key and every request that is sent to us. This can be um, as straightforward as just checking for the value of the header in each route, but uh, thinking forward a little bit, 
uh, instead of doing it uh, individually, uh, we can add a common uh, exception that will that will be raised every time the service key did not match what um, uh, what we expect. So I'm creating a class for uh, the uh, auth exception and uh, an exception handler. I'm just copying and pasting from my uh, previous code to save some uh, typing uh, while I'm recording the video. So in this uh, in this exception handler, uh, we are uh, uh, just returning a JSON body with a 401 uh, status code and uh, this this JSON body. Uh, in this test, it only expects a 401 status code, but we will reuse this exception in the future for uh, similar cases. I'm just going to fix some imports. And here's the uh, check service key function that takes the value of the uh, if service key header and compares it to the value of the if service key that uh, we expect. And if those two don't match, that raises the auth exception we've just created. Uh, we don't have uh, settings yet. Uh, we'll, we'll add it later so that we can store the service key and uh, a few other things in the environment variable. Uh, for now, I'm uh, just going to hard code the value. Make it work uh, in our routes. We need to look at the fast API documentation for um, a piece about injecting dependencies. They have a great tutorial on uh, dependency injection, but in this case, we're not expecting anything back from the dependency. So we um, we will not be adding it to the function like, like shown here. Uh, we will instead uh, edit uh, directly uh, to the doc to the decorator. And the docs here are telling us exactly how to do that. So app dot get the routes, and then dependencies. In our case, uh, this will be a check service key dependency. Uh, let's copy this. Part. and over in this decorator and we need to import depends so now we save it wait for the server to uh, reload and now anytime a call is made to this route the fast API framework is going to run the check service key function, which in turn will pick up the header and compare it to um, uh, what we expect. So let's try the endpoint test and see what happens now. Now look at that, it's all green. We have our 200 with the valid service key. And the second test that was failing previously is now green. So with an invalid service key, we have its 401 status code and we have the error body. Uh, the checklist only is looking for the 401 code. So this is all passing now. Uh, we will clean this up later um, and break it into a few different files for different routes um, because this will get unmanageable pretty fast. We will also store the service key in the environment variable so we're not exposing it in our code and are not committing it to GitHub, for example. 
but this will this will be in the next video as we move full steam ahead towards adding authentication. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos in the series. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.